guys, today I'm here to do the monthly recommendations of the month of April. This one's theme is mental health rec or just recommendations of mental health stories that have just done a really good job because a lot of books that do do mental health and some don't do it well, some do it great and I've got nine books to recommend and I've got three categories to talk about and I'm excited and I also got this new shirt that I'm obsessed with. I don't own like yellow clothing. I was like bunch up a bit when I actually move but I really like it. It's like a crop top though so at least you don't see the bottom of me because I am like hecka fat but anyway let's get into the video. So my first category is depression slash PTSD which is a th common theme that I do see in a lot of books and there are three books that I want to recommend in this genre of mental health and I'm excited to get into it. Alright the first book I want to talk about is Akamath by Sarah J Maas and I know this is a sequel I know but if you're one of the people that only read Akatar and you just didn't want to continue know that the main character Feiru goes through a lot of shit in the first book and in this book she is recovering from it and she has severe nightmares she vomits she feels sick all the time and and she just can't get rid of the horrible memories that plague her when she dreams and it's really sad but I think it was done really really well to have her PTSD shown in this story. It really added another side to her character to show that she wasn't strong all the time and she would break and sometimes she couldn't make it through things but, but the gradual healing that Feyre goes through in this book is really amazing and I just wanted to put it in this video because I just love it so much. The next book I'd like to talk about is Cold Summer by Gwen Collins. This book is about a boy who can time travel and he's in the present world and then he travels back to to the war times and he has PTSD from the things that he's gone through when he travels back in time to the war and seeing his friends die, having to kill people and just the life that he has to live and then coming back to his normal life where he's living fine, he's happy, everything is going how he wants it to go. But it really shows how scared he can be and, and there's times when he'd open a freezer and feel the cold or fireworks would set him off and like when he was really agitated it would make him go back in time so he was always trying to stay away from situations that would cause that. And I thoroughly enjoyed this book. This was a highly anticipated read for me last year and I'm so glad that I did read it and did enjoy it but not many people have read this book so it does have really good mental health representation in it. And the last book I'd like to recommend is Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. So I really like having mental health recommendations actually in fantasy books which is really really good. After the things that the, one of the main characters Kaz goes through he can't touch people and he has pretty severe PTSD and he does get depressed but it's really intense how what happened to him when he was younger caused him to not be able to be near people to be repulsed by them and just the way that he grew up and was brought up but the the PTSD is the main thing that I do want to talk about with this book because it was done really really well and like the development of it continued on into the second book and if he is in more books later on if Lee Bardugo does write more books it will be done really well to see more of his character and to see how far he's come because obviously in further books he's not going to be a main character but he might be a side character that we might see and get to know how his life is going but it was done so well in this book and I just enjoyed having it in there done so well. Okay the next category is selective music which is a thing that I do see in a lot of books and I think it's really good when it's done really well and it's like actually an anxiety thing for a lot of people when they have selective mutism because I have read a book where a person was doing it in protest like she used to speak before and she was fine. Some reasons for selective mutism is like things happening in your childhood or just being really anxious but I really do like stories that have this as a part of it and seeing the growth that some people go through with it and I'm just excited to talk about it. So the first book I'd like to recommend is The Problem With Forever by Jennifer L. Armentrout. The main character in this had a really shitty upbringing because she was just in foster home after foster home and when she was finally in one that stuck they used to tell her to be quiet all the time or she'd get hurt so she's developed the need to not speak at all unless she really really trusts the person that she's talking to. There was a boy when she was at this foster care and they got split up and five years later they see each other again and Mallory our main character is with a loving family now and she's able to speak to them quite clearly but, and she meets Ryder going to school for the first time because she wants to go to school to see if she can get her anxiety under control and her selective mutual him under control and she meets him again. He has like depression from what they went through but she just can't speak and because she trusts him he, she can speak to him but she goes through a lot of development in this book of being able to talk and actually have to do stuff like speeches at school and doing things and it's really scary for her but I really enjoyed that aspect of this book and I didn't even know this existed until it was published and I was so excited and I think it was my favorite book of 2016 because I'm pretty sure I didn't read it in 2017 because it made it onto my list of favorites but this is just an amazing book that everyone needs to read. Next book is The Things I Didn't Say by Carly Fosner and I really enjoyed this book and it's one that I've had for the longest time that I just never read. The main character in this book lost one of her best friends in an accident when she was a bit younger and she hasn't been able to speak since it occurred and it even says on the back here, I hate the label selective mutism as if I choose not to speak like the kid who refuses to eat broccoli. Maybe I shouldn't be using the term selective mutism but it's the best way to say it like it's like it's selective in a sense that they have the ability to speak but they just 
can't in a way but I really love her story and she's moved to a new school hoping that she can finally live her life thinking about her best friend and she meets a boy called Wes and he really brings her out of her shell but she doesn't speak really at all in this whole book like yes she does speak to her family but that is the only people that she speaks to but I really enjoyed like having a love story without actually having to speak to the person and they fall in love with you like I think that's very sweet she does communicate by writing stuff down but I really enjoyed this book and this is an Aussie book that everyone should read because it doesn't get much hype because a lot of the time books that get published in Australia aren't as popular as books that are published in America the books are published in hardcover and always look really pretty and most of the time only in Australia we only get paperback books unless it's something that's really popular like Illuminae for example but this is one that needs more hype so people should read it the last book in this category is Eliza and her monsters by Francis Sapia a character that has selective mutism in this book is Wallace and he is a sweetheart and I love him so much he is just a very quiet person and he does get anxious like I don't think he had anything really major happen in his past like there is one thing that happened but I like I read this book a long time ago so I'm pretty sure the thing that happened is the reason that everything occurs but I can't talk about it because it's a really key plot point in the end of the book but he just doesn't talk to many people like he doesn't even talk to his friends and it took him a while to be able to talk to Eliza and actually to trust her. I really enjoy the relationships between them but while this isn't the worst selective mutism that I've ever read in a book but he was one to really talk about because this book does have a lot of representation in it and it's amazing. And the last category I'd like to talk about is just anxiety because a lot of people do get anxiety and it can be some degrees can be worse than others and it's something I want to talk about because it is something that does happen to people like some people just think oh it's just a phase you're going through or it's just something stupid but anxiety is a real thing it is something that people go through and it's a horrible thing sometimes like I used to get social anxiety when I was a kid and I really hated it gradually in the past couple of years I have been experienced more anxiety just over like little things like just getting stressed out when I don't need to be and just always feeling this level of <gasps> inside me and I don't know what's happening but it is really annoying and it's just something that happens and the people that have gone through it they know and it's different for every single person no two people are going to be the same with their anxiety and it's just really good to see it in books though so people can actually understand it a lot more than just their sort of biased opinions about it so I am going to mention Eliza and her monsters again just because Eliza does have social anxiety in this book and she does hide behind making her graphic novel and like always hiding her identity with it so there's people around her who know of this story and read it but she can't tell them because she's too terrified to talk about it. It's terrifying for her for people to find out that she is the face behind Lady Constella, if that's the name. It has been a long time since I've read this book, even though it was like last year, but still. In most books, like people do develop to become better, but it's not like they're always going to be better, but it's just good to know people are going in the right direction. And okay, the next book I'd like to recommend is Queens of Geek by Jen Wilde, and the character that has anxiety in this is Taylor. For her to go to America to go to this Comic Con thing is terrifying to her, but she does it for her friends, and she just gets terrified about everything around her and having social anxiety as well. She just gets so anxious and being in a mind of this character who is anxious a lot of the time and just having her brain wired differently than everyone else's was such a different experience. Like this book also has like a lesbian main character as well who is different than Taylor. So much diversity in this one book but because we're talking about mental health rep here I'm only talking about Taylor but she was just a great character and I loved everything that she did. And one thing that Taylor wants to do when she's at Comic Con is meet one of her favourite authors but she is so scared and she doesn't know if she's going to be able to do it but she wants to try and I really love the journey with that like I keep saying journey here but these are all journey books in my opinion and I just love them. The next book I'd like to recommend is one that is an ultimate anxiety story and that is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell and it's an amazing book amazing. Seriously Kath I just relate to so much and I have said this on countless times but I just think she does have a social anxiety and she just planned to live in her dorm room and only go to classes the whole time she was at college. Her twin sister grew away from always being together and that was really sad for Kath because she lost one of her support networks and she never saw her sister as much as she used to and she has to make new friends and she meets a boy of course because like what stories can't have a boy because I feel like boys just add so much to stories. Girls also add so much to stories and can be either way without the main characters you know what I'm saying but just the love interest always makes things better in my opinion. Because I love love you know but I do love what she goes through with her social anxiety and trying to come out of her shell a bit because it is a new experience and she can't just run home or run to her sister and it's a great book and this is a book that people either love or hate but I I loved it when I read it. 
Okay, the last book I'd like to recommend is Finding Audrey by Sophie Kinsella. And this is a book that people might say doesn't have a good representation of anxiety, but I feel like it did all right. Like, the main character is 14, so it was interesting being in the mind of a 14-year-old and actually experiencing her anxiety. And, like, yeah, I get it. I get what people mean. But I still think it's a book to read just to check it out and see what you feel about it because it is interesting, again, as I said, to have a really young main character and then having her meet a boy, which is a bit odd. Like, you're 14, too young for that stuff. But I really did enjoy enjoyed this book and I feel like it was great and like the cover and the fact that she was so scared that she just has to wear sunglasses because she doesn't want to make eye contact with people was so amazing in my opinion like I honestly loved it so much. I am glad that I did pick up this book because I got an embargo price at a shop and I was just like shit yeah I'm gonna buy this book. Anyway guys that is all of my recommendations for this video. Most of the time I only have like five or six so it was good to be able to do a bigger recommendations video but anyway guys thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys later. Bye!